Hello everyone, my name is Clarissa Gossett and thank you for joining me today for this short video on how to make curved lettering in the Craft and Cut software. On your screen you'll see a picture of a log carrier I made for a camping project and I wanted the lettering to be a little fun on the ends of the log carrier so I used my Craft and Cut software to make lettering to cut with my vinyl um, digital cutter. So let me open up the Craft and Cut software. I love Craft and Cut software because it makes digital cutting so much easier. It takes all of the guesswork out for me. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, if you notice on your screen, yours might look a little different than mine. I've set mine up so the grid marks are one inch squares. So to do that I went up to my program preferences menu click on that gray gear and I go to environment and I set inches then I go to grid and I set my grid for the spacing are these uh, fine lines and the grid major are these dark lines so the spacing at vertically and horizontally I set at 0.25 so both at 2.25 and the grid major I set 4 and 4. So every 0.25 I have a grid major and that's 1 inch. So click OK. And this has just been helpful for me so I can tell or estimate how big my lettering is. So the next thing I want to do is open my text tool. So I click on this red letter T in the top left corner and a drop down menu comes up and I'm going to use a path that's the path icon the letter A with the little wavy line under it so click there and when I bring my cursor to the screen I have a letter A attached that means it's waiting for me to activate and I just click on the workspace it opens my path menu I'm going to scroll clear down to the bottom and I'm going to select the one called Wave. So click Wave. And it's coming. There we go. So there's my Wave for my font. So lots of font options for me to choose from. I could spend all day just looking at the pretty fonts. Anyway, I did cho choose Ossington. But let's say I wanted to choose another font. Let's try maybe, oh, oh, where's a fun one? This one's called Tail It. Click there. And I'm not quite sure how that would look with the lettering I want. So I'm going to use my font play tool, the letter F in the top left corner. Click font play and a screen opens up so I can type in my lettering and, and preview it with the font I've chosen. So let's go down to tail it. There we go, tail it. And it's beginning to populate on my screen. There we go. But I want a custom text so I'm going to put uh, camping we will go dot 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 and click OK give it a minute to think that's kind of cute better than I thought it would look so that's how you can preview the various fonts in whatever lettering you're choosing to do because some of them, and I don't know about if this has happened to you, but I go to stitch it out or I go to uh, cut it out and those letter O's turn into A's or the A's turn into O's and it doesn't look quite right. So this way you can preview your font. So we're going to close. And on my curve, I've chosen Ossington. Let's scroll up to Ossington right there and I played around with this for a little while to decide how big I wanted my lettering and etc 
So I just kind of took a ruler and decided I want my font or the height of my letters to be about 1.75 or an inch and three quarters. And I click apply. Give it a second to populate the screen. Oh, duh, I gotta type in something here. Sorry. <laughs> Hello. Uh, camping. It's only as smart as the operator, right? We'll go. Sorry. So camping, we will go. Now I'll click apply. There we go. And I can't see all of it, so I'm going to go over here to my magnifying glass. Double click on the magnifying glass, and there we go. Now we can see it all. Now, my log carrier happened to be about 20 inches wide, and so I kind of wanted it to fit the entire log carrier, and so I thought to myself, well, how, you know, how long do I want this sentence to be? I wanted it a little longer than 17.89, so I'm going to click my spacing over here, and I often get asked, what do the numbers in the spacing box mean? Well, I'm not quite sure, but what I do know is that the larger the number in the spacing box, the farther the spacing is between the letters. So I just um, experimented and tried one for my spacing, click apply. And they're just a little further apart, and they're about nine. The whole phrase is about 19 inches long now. I thought, yeah, that's pretty good. That's about what I want. Now, some other ways I can adjust the spacing between the letters. If you notice, I have yellow or yeah, bright yellow boxes on each letter, and blue diamonds down here at the bottom. So if I hover over one of the blue diamonds and wait for my uh, cursor to turn to a plus sign. I grab that blue diamond and slide and now it's spaced my lettering further apart. So I can do that with each individual letter if I choose. Um, let's undo and take it back to where it was. Or additionally I can hover over a yellow square, click on it, it puts a box around that letter so I can adjust just that letter. I wanted maybe a different angle on that letter, or I wanted it a little bit larger. There we go. Lovely. That's not what I wanted, but that's fun to play with. So let's undo and get our W back to where it was. All right, so I'm going to cut this with my digital cutter. So I wanted to see how it would look on my mat. So on the left side over here, I have a cutting mat icon, so if I click there, I get a picture of my cutting mat on my screen, and I notice, of course, that it's too big to fit on my cutting mat, so I'm going to have to cut it in pieces. So right now, it's highlighted with one uh, box around the entire thing. If yours is not highlighted, just click your selection tool again and click on the lettering, and it will highlight the entire uh, phrase, on your, phrase on your screen. So what I need to do is I need to break this apart so I can put it into sections. So I'm going to right click on it and break up the text. Click there. And now the text is broken up into individual letters. So at this point I could move letters around that way as well. But what I want to do is I want to split it in half, put a camping, and we will go separately. So I'm going to hover over and click on and highlight a camping, put a box around a camping, and I'm going to right click to group it all together so in case I don't grab the entire group I can now just move it as a, a group and put it up here at the top. And let's grab We Will Go, left click, draw a box around, let go, and slide this down to the bottom. Now I had lettering on both sides of the log carrier, so I'm going to need double lettering. So what I would do is I'd copy it and paste. 
and drag this above. Click a camping, copy, paste, and drag that down. There we go. Fits my entire mat. All right, now I need to know how to set my cutter with the depth, the speed, etc., to cut out this particular um, lettering. So the beautiful thing about Craft and Cut software is I have a friend to help me. So I'm going to click File and I'm going to say uh, click Save to Cut, Save to Cut. This is awesome. I tell Save to Cut what cutter I'm going to be cutting on, what type of material or fabric I will be cutting, and I'm going to cut this out of heat transfer vinyl. Click Next and it gives me all the settings I need for my cutter. Yay! Um, you can do a lot of experimenting and make a lot of boo-boos, but this way I get it right and I don't have to experiment. So it tells me what blade depth, what kind of blade, what speed, what pressure on my blade, and how many times to go around to cut. But an important thing on this screen are the special instructions. When using heat, when using vinyl for standard or flocked heat seal, remember you need to mirror image your design so it shows in the correct direction when applied. All right, well, did I mirror my design? No, I didn't. So I'm going to click Cancel. I'm going to select the entire set of lettering, and I can do that quickly by touching Control on my keyboard and the letter A. There we go. And I'm going to go up here and mirror it horizontally. Now let's do our save to sew. File, save to sew, tell it heat transfer vinyl, click next, next, and it gives me that warning again, and click finish. Now, um, it's asking me where I want to save it. I'm going to save it on my USB drive so I can plug that into my cutter or I could save it on my desktop or wherever I choose. I'm going to save it in SVG because that's what my cutter speaks. I'm going to call it Camping. Oh, let's just call it Demo. How's that? And click Save. Good, now it's on my USB stick and ready for me to plug into my cutter and cut it out. What also happens is a template comes up that I can print on my printer. I like this template for things that are in pieces. So let's say for instance I cut you know, a design on my cutter on my mat and I've got to cut it in individual pieces because I've got different colors and things going on but I want to know what it looks like to recreate it, to put it back together. So I print a template and I can fit the pieces of the puzzle back together. So I'm not going to print a template for a camping we will go because I just kind of haphazardly randomly put it on my fabric to, um, to fuse it on. So I'm not going to worry about cutting, uh, printing a template at this point, but so we'll say close. And there we go. So I'm ready to cut. I'm ready to fuse when I've got my um, lettering cut out. Um, another fun, really quick tip is there's a new tool in the Embellish line of products. It's a weeding tool, a new weeding tool. I love my weeding tool for weeding out all the areas of my vinyl that I don't need. So just a tip, check it out. Check out the Embellish weeding tool. It's really, really helpful. So thank you today for joining me and happy cutting.